Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Celtic Unrestricted Review Podcast. My name is Ryan Clifford, and join me this guest episode is JP. Well, JP, if anybody's watched the YouTube um, during the, the live episode or after, you see the man on the screen who we've got on this evening, mate. Um, we're looking forward to him chatting to us about his career, and obviously we're a Celtic fan, good to chat about Celtic, which we'll love to do. Um, we're looking forward to JP, hope you've had a good uh, Monday, mate, and uh, what's up to the chat? Hi, mate, good evening. Uh, God, it only seems like a couple of years ago that we were talking about the first match to last night, me, you and Barry. Uh, time flies when you're having good fun, Ryan, eh? Um, but no, pleasure to have the man on himself. Um, obviously, as you can see, folks, it's Jim Lachlan, former professional footballer, played with Kilmarnock from D United, we stunt at Sligo Rovers, um, Barnsley, down south as well. Um, centre back, I would say he was a proper centre back, none of this powder puff crap that you see nowadays. Um, proper man's man, wasn't he? Fear a challenge way back then, you could get away with good challenges and no getting pulled up with these powder puff referees that you're seeing nowadays as well. But no, pleasure to have you on, Jim. Uh, hope you're doing well, mate. And thanks again for coming on to speak to us. Yeah, no bother, guys. Thanks for having us. I um. So what you've been up to now that you're obviously no longer, obviously you're a Celtic fan, so we'll, we'll kind of start there um, and obviously tell us a bit about yourself and what you've been up to recently, um, what's life been like after the game? Ah, well, obviously I was at uh, Park Heath for the, the old firm game and probably everybody else absolutely buzzing with the result. Uh, and it's uh, it's great now going on to the Real Madrid game, listen to Big Ange and he's... Uh, post-match interview they are just talking about the lead up to the Real Madrid game he's just going to go attack, attack, attack and I think as a Celtic fans that's what you want to hear um, mm-hmm. you know especially coming off the buzz and the confidence that will be running through the team um, you know I'm I'm really no right as half against Real Madrid maybe as daft as that sounds to some people I just I just think he's, you know the confidence the boys will get for that the atmosphere that's going to be electric and, and Tuesday night at Parkhead and the confidence the managers go to tell the players, look, we, we go out and we, we play our game. And you never know, with a wee bit of luck, um, we might get a good result. Um, and what I like about the team is, is the way like, they always look to play forward. Do you know what I mean? You don't, all right, at times they will play the ball back the way, but when you look at the midfield players, especially O'Reilly, his, his killer passes that he plays through are just phenomenal. The one for Jota for the, for the second goal was... was uh, Phenomenal, really. Great ball for mm-hmm. McGregor taking the free kick quick. Um and then Jota's finish was 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 outstanding. But I just like the I like the rhythm and I like the way Celtic play it and I like the tempo to play it. And you never know we might catch Real Madrid uh, cold on Tuesday night. Well I was saying that to Ryan kind of last night as well, Jim, when we were on. Um Real Madrid have got tendencies not to start. They do enough to get through group stages, but it's always run about the business end of the season, they really kick into gear. Um and if you're going to get the Real Madrid in an half night, because Sheriff Tiraspol went to the new camp last season and beat them. That's so, right. In terms of that, see, I've got to be looking at that and going like that, right? Well, we're in a good brain of form. Um, you know, we 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 can get about us more. We've got energy, we've got legs, we've got a young team, they all know their roles. Some of the movement with your team, the rotations, everything that you know that, that they can do is unbelievable. And it's half the charts right now for me. Um Obviously, yourself, Ryan, you, you've obviously said your view on Real Madrid not for the more than yourself, but I just think, I agree with Jim, I just think that we could, we can get at them. Um, obviously, I don't want to, what I don't want to do, I don't want it to be one of the nights where we go and we, we wake up a sleeping bear and then we sort of bottle it and go, oh no, what have we done here? I just, yeah. I can't see that happening though. I can see his, and just gave them belief to play how he wants them to play and they're not going to. They're not going to shy away from it. They're not going to detract away from it. Um, I just think that we're, we're going to win for a roller coaster this season in terms of in the Champions League because of the way Ange wants to play. And I think it's quite fitting, Ryan, that we've got a good chance starting for tomorrow to really implement your style and what we want to do, mate. Like Jim says, I don't think anybody should write his after, but honestly, especially Celtic Park. That atmosphere's going to be incredible. The first time in a good few years we've had the, the group stage at Celtic Park. So 
as soon as that um, anthem comes out, the, the players walk out the tunnel. It's going to be mm-hmm. electric. Um, obviously, Jim Zafari he's played there. He knows what atmosphere like, but it's tenfold when you play in Europe with the Celtic. So, um, I think we're under the illusion it's going to be hard. Um, I basically say if, if, if they turn up, <coughs> sorry, if they turn up to what they can, we've no chance. But they, yeah. need to have, they need to have four or five of players, I would say, on the downgrade that night. And it can happen, like you say, at the Bernabeu, you could beat half a team for, uh, was it Ukraine, Sharif, or they, are they Ukraine? Sharif, tennis ball. Uh, I'm not sure, are you? I'm, I'm not sure. sure where, where the, I'm not sure where they're playing, but... Is it Moldova? I'm not... I, I'll tell you, that's how I think it's a bell. But they were one of the teams... I think that was their first time in Europe, was it, no? That season? I yeah. think it is, I, I think so, they played... I think they've right. played Europa before, but they've not played... I think that was the first time they so came to the league from. If they, if they can go to Bernabeu and win, then we can definitely beat at the Celtic Park. Um, but I'm de- I do agree with Jim, no matter what we think, I don't think you can write them off. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be realistic and say it will be hard, but we'll beat. I'm not saying we'll be better, but we'll beat Barcelona. But you've beat these bigger teams before, and you've actually played well against. It's not been a fluke. You've done well against Man United, Man City. You came in through, and and they were a top team at the time with Aguero, etc. So, so um, I think Jim, I think you could be right. There's definitely a there's definitely a push for us to try and get something again. I, I definitely think that. The, the only thing that worries me, like you say, with the quality and calibre of player they've got, right, they're t- they've won the Champions League last year, is when we attack, you know, the counter-attacks, because mm-hmm. obviously the way we play our full-backs and, and they're, they're, they're bombing forward, if they pick up the ball in the right areas and get it forward quick, then they're right on to our back to. But I must say, Big, Big Vickers has been absolutely outstanding, mm-hmm. even last year on loan. He never really loses it in the air. He's mm-hmm. quick. Um, do you know what I mean? He's good in the deck. Never gets flustered on the ball. I just think he's been f- fantastic. Really, really fantastic. And um, I'm sure all the players will be absolutely buzzing. Like I say, he's coming off a derby win. The amount of goals they've scored this season. But my only concern is, you know, obviously we could be two at the back with the full-backs pushing on and we could get caught with a counter. But at the end of the day, as Ange says, you know what I mean? Listen to him. That, that you know, confidence... And getting results and scoring the amount of goals we've scored, the players will be getting into that game. Absolutely, it's a free hit at Real Madrid. Really, we're in the Champions League. We've got the Champions League money. Nobody expects us to get through it. It's a free hit. It's a bit mm-hmm. like when I played with Coman, you go to Park Heath playing against Celtic. Mm-hmm. Everybody expects you to get beat. So just roll your sleeves up and have a go. Do you know what I mean? It's a free hit. Nobody expects you to win. Um, but what I would say is, with Celtic fans. There is an expectation when you're playing at Parky to go and beat teams, you know what I mean? And it's probably just because we've not been in the Champions League for a few years. For probably a, a few, I mean, even a few of my mates, oh, I don't know the morning night and all that. I say, well, the way you're just going to be, it's all positive. You know, but like I say, the only thing is, when we bomb on, it's just them cat- catches on the counter with the pace they've got. But you look at us going forward and the pace that we have got in the team and the fact that Kyogo's fit, which I can't believe, do you know what I mean? Um, they're saying that Kyogo's going to make it tomorrow night. Um, you know, that's an added bonus as well to have him maybe come off the bench as well. Mm-hmm. Jim, just as you say that about Kyogo, um, it's quite good that you say that. That was going to lead on to my next question for you. What do you think, me and Ryan have spoken about this today, what do you think in terms of that actual incident that happened to Kyogo and the fact that he wasn't able to play on and he had to come off after five minutes. Then the big fella comes off the bench, plays about 80 odd minutes. Outstanding. Um, and then, but all of a sudden, he's fat enough to play tomorrow. So, what's changed between he's not able to finish a game and a derby on Saturday, but all of a sudden he's, he's fat? Because I guarantee, you, see if we'd be a turn does on Saturday, would he have been on Sky Sports News today in the training field? Because I, I don't think so. And I, I personally, that, that, that wouldn't sit right with me if I was Jack Amakis. I'd be chatting my Angie's door saying, hold on a wee minute. He couldn't play he couldn't play on on Saturday. I ended up having to come on. So is it because he's now back, ready to go? But am I going to have to jump to the bench again? I just don't think that's right, mate. Aye, well, it's just, it was a strange one because when he came off right away, I'm like, he's maybe knocked his shoulder out the way he went down and it was right at the Aye. start of the game. I've not seen a replay, I must be honest. Um, so I've not seen the incident back, but Unless I've managed to pop his shoulder back in, but there's been nothing in the press about that. So it was a strange one, like you say, that the fact that he's come off after five minutes. Um, 
and then obviously he's fit on Monday. I don't know. I, I, honestly, I, I can't answer that. But like you say, I, I think I think you'll start with a big man. Um, and obviously, you've got Kyogo that's that, that's fit and, and can come off the bench because his movement, to be fair, in the 18-year box is second to none. It's absolutely phenomenal. You know what I mean? I played centre-back and it's it's one of the ones, as soon as saying a wide area, the ball's coming in and you take your eye off Kyogo to look at the ball and the cross coming in. He's in behind you. He's across the front of you. Um, but I think the big man was outstanding in the, in the Saturday. And uh, like I say, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, if Big Ange starts a big man. And then obviously you've got Kyogo to come off the bench with his pace and his movement. If it's sitting at nothing each, what a, what a substitution you've got to bring on. And I think that's that's a good thing about Celtic. Now, you look through the team, um, the, the, the depth I've got in the squad, it's... Uh, it's fantastic, you know what I mean? It's really, really good. So, I, I think all bowls, bowls well for uh, Tuesday night. I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. That's a massive squad we've got on it, um, in terms of depth and quality. No, like years ago, Jim, you were buying guys like Kamala, Bio, Marion Sheb, just to sit on the bench and no scene for six months. And then, He's going to come by on, isn't he, right? Ah, uh-huh, Shaq Dardanese. He plays in um, Shaq Dardanese. So, uh, but I'm a massive fan of Jackie Marcus. Um, I think he probably should play. Um, but on to yourself, Jim, um, I would say a very, very good career, mate, played at a very high level. Um, how did you get picked up to play professional? Was it through Boys Club or was it through like, and Digs and kind of pro youth? No, no. Uh, back in the day, was, it was more like S-forms you signed, right. uh, Ryan, back in the day. Uh, I never actually signed an S-form. I was, I was training at that time. You were allowed to, I mean, it's changed now. It's all pro youth. You've got to commit to a club, whether it's Celtic, Partick Thistle, Rangers, Motherwell. You commit to that club. You can't play for your school, etc. But back in the day with me, it was um, basically training every night of the week with my boys' club. Uh, the, the boys' club I get picked up for. I played with Wolves in Carmel in East End. Oh, and I moved yeah. on to say, uh, I played with Wolves in Carmel. Wol- Wolves had a good setup with Tam Eady, who was uh, the, the headmaster at St. Joachim's. And, and, and at all levels, Wolves had good teams. And then for there, I went to say, like, boys' club, played with them for years. And then I moved to a club, Highbury Boys' Club. Um, and that's when I get picked up. I was with Kilmarnock, trained with Kilmarnock for, for a while. And at that time, I was training with Motherwell. And then it just came basically training with Batherham. Batherham were keen to sign me. And it came to me sort of leaving school, sort of fourth year leaving school. Um, and for work experience, I'd done a week at Kilmarnock and I'd done a week at Motherwell. Motherwell were in the Premier League. Kilmarnock were in the, the old first division at the time of the Championship, as it is now. Um, and... I went to Motherwell for a week. Tommy McLean was the manager. They were sitting high in the league, sitting third or fourth in the Premiership. Uh, had a great week training there with the team. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and then I went to Kilmarnock for a week. Went to Kilmarnock under Tommy Burns and Billy Stark. Um, a lot of good experience, seasoned pros there. They were obviously trying to go up to the Premier League at the time. Went down there for a week and then had the option whether I was to sign with Motherwell or sign me sign with Kilmarnock, you know what I mean? Um, as I said, a lot of boys at my age at that time signed S forms. I never done that. I was just happy just training with different clubs. Um, and and as a surprise to a lot of people that I, I chose to sign for Kilmarnock, you know, they were in, like I say, the championship or the old first division um, over Motherwell. Um, and a wee story about that. Um, Tommy McLean, actually, after I decided that I was going to sign with Kilmarnock, Tommy McLean, I was at Holy Cross in Hamilton School. He turned up at the school. Um, the headmaster came into my class at the time I was in mass and the headmaster comes in big Mr Lockren and he's a six foot five or something he comes in and I'm like ah, can I oh shit what have I actually done here what's he want me for I'm thinking I've not done it everybody used to smoke uh, <laughs> behind English block, block. I never I, I wasn't a smoker but some of my pals would smoke and I would get in there and that particular day at, uh, at lunchtime he came running and he was shouting balling do you know what I mean right you is it and we all done it, we all, we all scarpered away, got away in that. And then obviously that afternoon he comes to my class, I'm thinking, oh no, what have I done this? I, I don't smoke, does he think I was smoking or whatever? Anyway, um, he took me out and he says, listen, there's somebody here to see you. And it was Tommy McLean. And he says, why are you, why, why are you not coming, coming to Motherwell? And I was like, listen, I've just got a good feel about it. I says, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it at Motherwell. And even, even there and then he offered me, he says, whatever they have offered you, we'll double everything. And I wasn't a lot Kilmarnock had offered me anyway. And I says, no, I says, I've gave Kilmarnock my word and I says, I'm just I'm just going to stick to stick to what I've chosen. Uh, and that was it. As I says, I went to Kilmarnock and it, it sort of proved a, a, a good decision because I managed to, 
to play in the first team under Tam, Tommy Burns and Billy Starr at a young age and uh, just went on for air, you know what I mean? It's interesting, JP as well. He's obviously made his debut at 16 as a young guy. He's obviously, for me, maybe Jim's year, maybe realised, like, I don't know if that's the truth, Jim, but he might have maybe more chance of playing with Kamarnock as well. And obviously, JP is playing with, under under Tommy Burns and Billy Starr. Mm-hmm. And at, at that time, uh, for the era, the two guys, massive experience, it'd have been very, very good to be under the wing of the guys. Oh, it was brilliant. Oh, sorry, Jim, on you go. No, it was brilliant, honestly, like, um, playing under Tommy Burns, um, and obviously being a Celtic fan, and I went to the games at the time as well, for school, you know what I mean, with Park Kids, the old Celtic end as it was, uh, up the back of the Celtic end and that, and, uh, Tommy Burns was a player manager down there, and Billy Stark still played as well, with George McCluskey as a player, with Bobby Williamson as a player, uh, with Andy Millen at the back, um, Gus McPherson who's going to be a, a manager as well, right back. We, we had a lot of experience, Bobby Geddes and goals, we had a lot of experience down there as well, and um, to actually play under Tommy Burns um, was fantastic, and, and the way you made you feel about yourself, do you know what I mean? And the good thing for us as young boys, not just myself, um, a lot of the boys that managed to break through the first team, his motto was, you're, uh, you're, you're good at, you, if you're good enough, you'll play. You're old, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Um, and that was his motto. And um, and he encouraged all the young boys. And, and the good thing for us at that time, although we'd, we'd ground staff duties, which a lot of the young boys don't do now when they're in these academies, but we, we, we helped the groundsmen, you helped the wash women with the laundry, you polished the first team players' boots. So you were always running about the first mm. team. You washed the first team players' cars things like that, but you were always about the first team. Um, and we also trained with the first team, which was a massive learning curve. You know what I mean? At a young age when I went in there, um, you know, at 16, just out of school, and you're, you know, you're up against Bobby Williamson, George McCluskey. Do you know what I mean? Very quickly you learn, I, I, I need to get stronger. I need to start working on my upper body because I'm not strong enough against these guys. And how clever they were as well. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with pro use. Pro use is still fantastic. Technically, there's a lot of good boys come through that, but you're not playing against men. You're playing against boys. And even me going to Kilmarnock at that age and managing to team with the first team, because we team with the first team a lot. And we used to play like a bounce game on a Friday where it was obviously the first team set up for Saturday to be working on the shape of the team. We would play directly against them. Do you know what I mean? And that was a massive learning experience. Again, playing against guys with three, four hundred games under under their belt, you know what I mean? All the wee tricks up their sleeve. And I learned a hell of a lot for that. And I learned about myself and what I had to um, improve on. I didn't need the manager to tell me I could tell. I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't quick enough in the head. Um, and I had to learn very quickly. And I did, do you know what I mean? But uh, but it was brilliant, you know. And Tommy Burns, to be honest, and Billy Stark were fantastic. Tommy Burns just made you feel that there was, there was nobody better than you. He's... he's Man management of experienced pros and young boys was fantastic. And it didn't mean you were over the white line and you didn't play well, mm-hmm. but what I would say is for the experienced pros at the club to the young guys like myself, I'd have ran through a brick wall for the guy. Do you know what I mean? That It just made you feel that good about yourself. That's interesting that you say that, Jim. <clears throat> Obviously, because you've, you've heard many of stories about Tommy Burns and the way he was as a person. And how... Like when he when he was a manager, <clears throat> what was that about him, Jim? Did he just have that wee where he could look at you and go, I know what he needs? Some people need a wee cuddle, some people need to get a boot up the arse, some people need a good tail and half, some people need but was it just that that was so special about him? He just knew the individual itself and what was needed. He had an aura and a presence about him. You know, I right. mean you walked into the, if he walked into the room, people listen. Whether it was experienced pros that had loads of respect for him or whether it was young boys like us he just had that presence about him for what he'd achieved in the game as well and he'd an aura but he's motivated the, the, the way you go boys gone aye and he would give you a boot up the arse at, at times there's nothing wrong with that but you've got to do it to the right boys that will give you the right reaction and he knew the boys to pick on to get the right reaction and some mm. boys did need a need an earn run you know you, you had to pick them up and boost them you couldn't shout and ball at them and, it, and he was brilliant at that he knew who to pick on to get the right reaction, and knew the boys that, hey, come on, you can do better than that, what's wrong, come on, we need, we need you at it, we need you at it, come on, just, he was brilliant at that, and uh, his training was brilliant, the full atmosphere at Comala at that time was just, the place was just buzzing, do you know what I mean, and it was great to be partying, and as I say, to, to walk into a dressing room full of men, 
at 16, make my debut in the Premier League was uh, was fantastic, you know what I mean? And then becoming a regular at sort of 17, 18 was, was phenomenal, do you know what I mean? Looking back, I, 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 I'm over the moon that I managed to do that at a young age. But I must feel that like my own character was, I wasn't happy, even like when I was doing first team players' boots, I was polishing boots and they would always wind you up, right, be man, make sure my boots are shining, I can see my face in them, blah, blah, blah. And in the back of my head, uh, Jai, I was always oh, like myself. If I was playing reserves, I wasn't happy playing reserves. I wanted to get in the first team. And even mm-hmm. when I was in the boots, I'm thinking, I want to take your place in the team. I ain't bother. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure they're shining your boots. But mm-hmm. I want to take your boots. I want to take your place in the team. And that was my that was my mentality. A lot of young boys, when we were all on the ground staff, bearing in mind there was 20 years on the ground staff, um, a lot of them were happy playing reserves. I wasn't happy playing reserves. I was never happy playing reserves. I want to get in the first team. That's what I'm. That's why I'm not here to play reserves. I'm here to play in the first team. I want to play in the first team as quickly as possible. How do I mm-hmm. do that? Then I need to do well every time in training. When Tam and Billy start says right, you're training with the first team. I need to stand up and no be frank to any of the first team players, um, which I wasn't. I mean, I played reserves. I had to stand out in the reserves, and I managed. What, but but also what I would say is, any boys when you go into a club, back back there, you know. You, the, man, you, the manager needs to like what you bring to the table, mm. especially when there's 20, 25, 15, whatever it may be, young boys uh, on the ground staff. When the manager goes to watch a game, you know, we can go to watch a game, Jay, and you might say, oh, I like him as a player, and I don't like him. That's what I mean. Mm. Like, Sam Burns lo- liked what I bring to the table. If any other manager come in, they might not like what I bring to the table. So there's an element of luck, I would say, as well. Although I, I did have a good attitude in that, but you need that wee bit of luck that that the manager likes you as a player and what you bring to the table, you know, because what happens with a lot of young boys now is one manager will maybe no fancy them. It's only one guy's opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, another manager might come in, but look at look at Ralston at Selick. Out the picture, Ange comes in, gives him a chance, and the boys took his chance. I've got so much admiration for him, how well he done. Um, and obviously, Yeranovic is playing the new, but as a backup, Ralston, when you look at his attitude, with the amount of managers that sort of knocked him back, he went out on loan, and then Ange comes in, gives him a chance, and he's took it. Do you know what I mean? That's what you've got to do. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it just comes down to, I think, in any walk of life, any job you go for, you need that wee bit of luck to get it. And I was a bit lucky at that time that, as I say, Tam Burns and Billy Stark like what I brought to the table and, and put me in, and it no fear put me in at a young age, you know what I mean, playing the first team. I think JP, like um, Jim says here, mate, we spoke about it um, in the past and previous podcasts that, for me, Obviously, I don't know about shoot health and safety now, but the way that Jim says about cleaning the boots and basically learn that trade before you play mm-hmm. football, I think that if that could happen again, I think it should because for me, the way they, like Jim says, pro youth now, it's technically very good and they get palm pubs mm-hmm. and they get the best of treatment and it does help them going and be a footballer, but does it really learn you to be a footballer? Does it show you that I, I, you know what I, mean? I think now, Ryan, like my, my motto with young boys, like I see young boys all the time and anybody that asks my advice, you, when you step into an academy, you're not a football player. No. It's only an opportunity mm-hmm. to become a football player. Once you've played 40, 50 games in the first team and you've earned the first team player's mm-hmm. respect, then that's when you've made it. No, when you step into an academy and you go for lunch and your kit's all laid out at, up at Lennox Town and Murray Park, wherever it may be, you're only playing under 18s, under 21s, under 23s. Do you know what I mean? Um, and technically, all these boys are very, very good players. But I think for us, we used to, Christmas, you had to get in and sing in front of the first team, Mark Tommy Burns. Every young boy, 20s, had to get in and sing in front of the first team. So you're getting there with a brush as your mic, you know, upside down with that. You know what I mean? Stalling on the top of the, the laundry, singing, they're all hitting you with soaks and all that. But it's character building. Do you know what I mean? So you're getting in there singing it and, 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 and the gaff for Tam Burns was at the time, if you can't sing in front of 25 first team players, how are you going to go there and play in front of 10,000 at Rugby Park? 12,000 right. fans? If you can't sing in front of 25 players, you're not used to me. I was like, geezer, I'm in there. Geezer, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you a song. I get happy about five or six soaks off all the boys, but it's character <laughs> building. Do you know what I mean? It really is. And, and I think that's lost. And, and even cleaning the first team players' boots, I loved all that. Do you know what I mean? You, you, I, I, I think I had three players that you look after. They give you a bonus at Christmas. You help the laundry woman, your pal with her. You take all the washing down to her. You help the groundsman with the park. Um, you work, like I say, you wash the first team players' cars. Um, 
funny, I know I just passed my test, I know, 17, and uh, says, uh, Bobby, says to Bobby, Owen says, Jim, go and wash my motor, I need bother. I'll go and wash your motor. But what i done is, I washed his motor, and then I had it run the side of the park, know what I mean? So, <laughs> you had the car park at Rugby Park, so I passed my test, I went, I went like, oh, fuck this, I'm going to just play a prank on him. So I had it around the corner, and I went back in, and he was having his lunch after training, and that. he's like, Hey, Jimmy Lockwell, uh, I says I've just put the key, I've just put the keys in your toilet bag, Bobby. I need borrow thanks, son. And then I've just disappeared. Not I mean, so he's been out of the car park, and his motor was <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, no, so I mean, he's come back in and he's like, "Here are you." And I'm out, I'm out helping the crowd. And I'm like, "What is that?" He's like, "Where's my motor?" I says, "It's in the car park. It's not in the car park, but you don't need my motor on that." So. Uh, Aye, so he took me the next day. I get to in the boot room, man, and filled in me a few of the first team. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I, I mean, honestly, things like that were brilliant. Honestly, absolutely brilliant. So, uh, so I, aye, that was it, man. But that, in my opinion, Jim, I think a lot of that side of the games are way now, um, because all the young boys are all pampered now. And you said it earlier on; they're not playing against men. They're playing. They're playing against one another for ages. I'm maybe fifteen. Mm-hmm. Then they're going up and they're playing against one another at 16. Then they're playing against one another at 17. And so on and so on and so on. It's the same level that they're all rising with their teams. So all the they Rangers were... boys, all the Hearts boys, all the Celtic boys, all the, they're all playing each other. Aye, and I do. They're, 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 but obviously the Celtic B team are now in that only league now. So it should, should help them a wee bit. It should, it help, should help them a wee bit. But uh, as a standard, that, because here we go, right? Celtic's B team play Real Madrid tomorrow. That's miles, uh, like, a different level altogether, in my opinion, mm-hmm. in the Lowland League. And I'm not being disrespectful to the Lowland League, but the Real Madrid boys are a serious wake-up call for any team that's in that Lowland League beside them. Um, and they've already, I think, one or two of the teams have already turned the Celtic B team here this season in the Lowland League. Yeah. They've had a couple of defeats already, so... I, I, I just, I just, I, think, know, I, just, I just, I just look back at my time. I'm not saying it was right, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I was leaving school and, and playing reserves. You know what I mean? And and I just, I just felt that I learned more playing against seasoned pros, experienced players. <laughs> that as I say, were a lot cleverer than me. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. And 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 I had to learn very, 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 very quickly. And I knew what I had to work on um, to to improve. Um, and we have had a lot of boys. I mean. My time playing with Dundee, even Dundee United, with a couple of boys come in for Rangers, a couple of boys come in for Celtic. Technically, very, very good players. And these boys in a training game would be the first pick in my team. You know, when you do wee small side games, I like it. I'm in my team technically, the wee man's mm-hmm. brilliant. But come a Saturday when it's Dundee United, say we were playing a derby, Dundee United v Dundee, right? It's 50 50. Do you know what I mean? It's no like you're no playing with Celtic, but you're going to have all the ball. Mm-hmm. Celtic B team, or, you know what I mean? You're playing Dundee, Dundee United. We need to win. Seven, eight, one to one battles to beat them today. It's a mm-hmm. 50 50 game, there's no much in it. Um, and that's where they wouldn't be in my team. Do you know what I mean? Maybe come off the bench for the last 20 minutes, you know, when teams get tired and all that. But um, a lot of these boys, when they came on loan to up when I was at Dundee United, Dundee, uh, teams like that, and we got them on loan, like I say, technically very good players, but they didn't play many games because they had to play against men, they had to play in a game that was. 50-50 where you had to win second balls, you had to win your tackles. Um, they just weren't used to that. They were used to dictating with the ball and having loads mm-hmm. of the ball, loads of the ball. Whereas, you know, when you're playing in the SPL, uh, you're not going to have a lot of the ball. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You've just got to win your battle. If I'm playing against you, I've got to win my battle. And that's what I found with these boys. Technically very good, but no use to a one-on-one battle and you had to get the better, better of your opponent, you know? Do you think that's the issue now, Jim, in terms of the youth, the, like the B teams, because obviously when you look at the Celtic boys when they went away with the boys to Austria, I just, I don't know, there, there, there seems to be a gulf and a jump between what we've got first team level ah, and some of these boys physically and like learning their positions and rotation. They try to get used to it, to, you know, and these guys are meant to be training with the first team every day. But like you you've seen the boy like Owen Moffat and he's been shipped out to Blackpool now. Some of these yeah. boys are getting shipped out because they just turn me there. I mean, I would say, in my opinion, the boy Mikey Johnson's on his last legs, I know. Technically a good player. Lost his way a wee bit over the last couple of seasons. 
Now he's here in Portugal. Ange did give him an extra year's contract. I think Ange does fancy him somewhere down the line, but I think he's on his last legs. It's the same way sort of like James Forrest now, I know. Maybe he's come to an end he's, you know, an end he's sort of tenor at the club. He's going to be a bit part player now because of the, the, the talent of Jota and he's got this new boy, Haskabanovic, in now as well. I'd imagine Forrest is going to be, he's got a bad arm, he can all play wide. So, but in terms of the youth, like say the big boy Lolo, um, you're a good day, Shaw. In mm-hmm. my opinion, Jim, all these boys went miles off what we've got and capable of playing in the first team right now. And I think that's a problem because these boys aren't being tested. They're playing against boys the same age. They're not, not being tested with men, proper mm-hmm. men who will only give two fucks about getting through them. No, that's right. That's what I need. That's what's needed. That grounds you. Aye, I, 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 I agree with that. For years, like when I was younger, I played with boys and a lot of boys couldn't handle a cut of guys being them sticking to the side of the park. And I'm going, you're why the fuck up there? See if you can't handle a guy calling you an asshole at the side of the park. How are you going to be 10, 15,000 people booing you when you do something wrong with a butt? No, no. But you're not going to handle it, you just crumble. So, I think the biggest example of any young young kid coming through the ranks of Celtic now is the Celtic captain, Callum McGregor. Aye. Came through the youth, went on loan in Ox County or something like that for a season, come back to Celtic, and now he's Celtic captain, come right through the ranks all the way. There's, there's your example, you know what I mean? Surely people look at... I mean, if I was in it, say, like, I would... I would be trying to ask Alan McGregor questions. What did you do? What did, did you think that was good for you going to Notts County? Blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And try to get, get information out of him. Um, because where he is now, um, and, and the way you... I mean, even... He's just like a Rolls Royce, a midfielder for me. Um, oh, yeah. Not middle of the part. I mean, even... You don't really see him <laughs> that much on Sunday, but he's controlling the game. Sorry, Saturday. Because normally they're playing on Sunday, but Saturday there. <laughs> it's just... You know what I mean? He just controls the game. Do you know what I mean? The tempo sale that we're playing at, and he's just, he's always there. He's just always there in the right position. Mm-hmm. And the way he, he lets the ball run through his body, etc., playing playing the passes, he's just, he, he's he's a phenomenal football player. I just, I love watching the boy. Um, and like I say, he's never in any border. He's never pictures in the paper doing anything wrong. So there's an example for any young boy coming through the Celtic youth. Um, and look what he done. He did the stay there. He went, he went down south. So that's taking himself out of his comfort zone to get down to I don't know what Notts County are in League One, League Two in England and mm. played down there for what six months or a, a season it was and he's come back up and now look where he is when Scott Brown leaves the selling captain. Phenomenal. No, 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 he's played that line he was at the same team as not in Notts County as Jack Greeley. He's signed for Man City for 100 million a year ago. I know. So, so that's what I'm saying. So, no, that boy went out and loan at one point in order to try and help his career move forward. So, yeah. But, you need, in my opinion, a loan deal only works if you go to the right team. It plays the way similar or similar to the way your team plays. Look at Billy Gilmore last season. He didn't know Norwich, Norwich for worst team in the Premier League. Aye. But didn't suit Billy Gilmore because he likes to play in the front, fat likes to play forward, and Norwich for fucking defending most of the games. Because the, so it needs to be suited. It's the same as the boy Scales. He's been up with Aberdeen. In my opinion, Scales isn't going to play the way he plays at Celtic under Jim Goodwin. Any disrespect yeah. to Jim Goodwin, but Aberdeen are a defensive side, but especially when it comes up against coming up against the bigger teams in the league. Um, they don't play an expansive game of football. Yeah. Um, so I think you need to go to a, the, the move needs to be good for all parties, I think, and it needs to be right. I don't know what you think, Ryan, obviously, um, on that basis, mate. But I think personally, for a young boy to develop, if they're not going to let him play against men and get the reserve league back in again. We're senior pros. I mean, I remember stories of hearing Paul Abbott going down and talk about like Cy Ferry and yeah. boys like, looking up to him and being able to play alongside him, learning, getting an education off these guys, learning, coming back to injury, having to go in there and play a couple of games. Uh, Big Baldy, Tomo, no, they all had to do it at one point. Um, but these boys are never going to learn properly unless they actually do, like you say, Jim, play against men, guys who have been there and bought a t shirt. And they're sitting with cigars and flip flops on there because they're enjoying it. Aye. But these boys are never going to learn playing against a, like, just say Thomas Bradley and Michael McIntyre. So they two have played against one another for five years. Where are they learning? Because they're not learning one another's it? games inside. Aye. Group, so that's true. That, do you know what I mean? They've come through every level. Yeah. So the big that's step up now is going to be the more for Celtic B team because they're playing against a team who mm. they've never played against. They're probably going to be a wee bit ahead of them, 
in terms of who knows, they might get a result, they might go. I'm expect I'm gonna put my put my neck out there and probably say they're probably gonna take a bit of doing to be honest, because I think Madrid boys are pretty decent for what I've heard. Um, right. and I think that again that's gonna be a major step up for the boys and a, a good awakening. But that's what I mean about the, the lack of preparation for these games, Ryan. It's just no there. It's, well, it's no there. They're, they're not they're getting a chance to prepare properly for these we've, kind of games that are going to be coming we've up. Been, we've been crying out on this podcast and me personally for to bring the, I know they're supposed to bring the reserve league back with Celtic no putting in for it. Um, I don't understand why. Obviously, Ange doesn't want a minute, but you can these guys are going to back in, isn't it, right? I, I, but Celtic Aye. have hiked Celtic no going a minute. I don't know for whatever reason that is. Celtic but, never been. Um, I've been crying out for that to get back because even the guys before the like a Yeti went up and stuff, like a Yeti that could play, see if they let the guys who obviously it's a bit unfair advantage, right? But see if they could allow at least two or three players for the first team to back with injury to play in the long league team. They would still get experience of how to play football playing with these guys. Imagine Starfield could back with injury, you know what, mate? Just go and play half an hour to get your fitness up. Imagine Boston Lawwell playing with Starfield. Mm-hmm. Right. How much knowledge you'll get for half an hour playing my Swedish internationals than they would be playing next to the guy who plays next to every, every Saturday or during the week? It's nice. Right. It's nice. Jim will tell you it's yourself, JP. And right. it's, 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 nice. just... it's, it's total night and day. It's the same when I went to, but I played 20 ones, right? But when I left 20 ones at an early age, I went to play the amateur and I learned more playing amateur football than I did playing 20 ones. <laughs> 21s mm-hmm. at that time when I played 21s, it was probably the best it was at. It was technical, it was quick, you had to be fit as fuck. But when I went to play the amateur, I was only a tiny wee striker. But you kicked about half the park, half these amateur mm-hmm. holes, and I was quite nippy, but you were getting kicked apart. I'm like, referee, I'm like, I need to fucking bulk up here. Like, like you said, Jim, you need to learn, you need to toughen up, because if you don't, you'll just get fucking hammered. And I don't believe that these boys at the Lone League, it's already playing 90 minutes and two at Lennox Town getting nicey, nicey stuff. Obviously, um, pampered, but if you're not getting a, I would say a proper trade and learning curve at football, uh, like you've had that, Jim, so you've had a, a very, very good career and you've done very well. Some of these guys will maybe like Moffat, maybe go to Blackpool, they might go down to a conference team next if he if doesn't do very well. These guys will get up and down, but because you've had that education earlier, Jim, you've just went up and kind of stayed there. Do you know Aye. What I mean? And I must be honest, even looking back my career at 18, 19 years in the game, and we've met up with a few of the boys that were on the ground, ground staff way, I still look back fondly on my time doing all the duties. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because like you say, it's a learning curve, and, and I enjoyed it because it was good banter. Like I say, you were always close to the first team because you were in the first team dress room getting all the stuff. Back then, we did train with the first team and all. You know, you were helping the grounds with it. Um I, I just I just thought it was a, a great learning curve. Um, obviously, doing all the kit on the Friday for the first team game on a Saturday, putting all the boots in, make sure you had your first team players' boots in, make sure they were perfect the way they wanted them. Because you knew at one time you were going to be a first team player and you would have a boot boy looking after your boots. I think all these things are important mm-hmm. because, like I say, at that time, I was doing all the duties, cleaning the terrace and etc. doing all of that because I was only given the opportunity to be a first team player or, or be a football player. I wasn't a football player. It was just an opportunity to become a football player. Whereas I think sometimes these young boys now with social media and everything like that, so other social media pages, but they've only been into Lennox Town or whatever it is, Murray Park, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they go in there and they're overawed with all, all their kits laid mm. out, their boots are laid out and they think, I've made it. You ain't made it, mate. You're only playing under 18s with Celtic. You're mm-hmm. no made it, mate. You've only got an opportunity to become a football player. And that's where I think they fall down a wee bit. Whereas when we, we went into Kilmarnock, we'd loads of wash your first team player, wash your balls, clean the boots, help the groundsman, help the laundry woman, wash the cars, you know what I mean? Set up the training park. It was just, you done everything. Sing for the first team at Christmas. You know what I mean? Everything. So it was it was a good learning curve, you know what I mean? And it, it does stand you in good stead, but... As I say, is whether that's going to come back, I can't see it. And um, but I don't think it does anybody any harm. <laughs> obviously spoke about loans. So you went to Barnsley and then to United. What made you go to Barnsley and how was that down south and obviously went to down United? Well, I was doing it at Barnsley because I was in dispute with Kilmarnock. At that particular time, I was uh, I was 24, so I'm still under the Bosman. And I was in dispute over over a contract. Um, Kilmarnock had offered me a four-year and I just didn't think the terms were great. 
we had signed Lip McCoy, we signed Geranti, we signed a boy Christoph Cocard, all in really good money, um, which was fine, you know what I mean. But coming through the coming through the ranks, I just didn't think I was getting the money I was due, mm-hmm. and because at that time I was playing every week, I was t- keeping a lot of good uh, centre backs out of the team at the time, who the, the club had paid good money for, um, and then, to be fair, like I say, it just one one that prepared to give me the the contract that I was looking for. So ended up. Uh, Dave Bassett was a manager years and years ago down at Barnsley and uh, basically because I was in dispute with Kilmarnock which uh, it was a shame because that was sort of towards the end of my time at Kilmarnock because I was in dispute over the contract what happened was I went down to Barnsley for the month um, I actually never played I went down there on loan because they had a few injuries the boys I went down on a Monday um, we have you to play on the Saturday and we done shape all week and then the, the two centre-backs declared themselves fit on a Friday Played on the Saturday, Barnsley won one nil on the Saturday, and then for then the three games on for that, they won them as well. So I just come back up the road. I only went down to Barnsley because I was in dispute uh, with Kilmarnock over a, a contract, and then um, and then I ended up signing with Dundee United. Kilmarnock wanted a hundred thousand for me. Uh, Bristol City at the time, uh, no Bristol Rovers, sorry, it was Ian Holloway was the manager. He had they'd bid a hundred grand, and Dundee United bid a hundred grand. Um, I chose Dundee United because Alex Smith was a manager up there and he was my manager at Scotland under 21s when I played with the 21s and I was like sort of the captain at the 21s under yeah. Alex and I liked his style I liked his management I liked the way he had the team playing um, and as I say I ended up going up to uh, ended up going up to Dundee United um, and had a good time up there do you know what I mean I enjoyed it um, but it was, a, it was just a shame the way it finished at Kilmarnock because um, you know, because I would not sign a contract, they sort of bomb me out. You know, I was, I was on the bench for the reserves and all that for playing in the first team. Um, so it wasn't a nice, a nice way for it to finish. Considering I was there for like, like I say, fifteen stroke sixteen I signed, and I left there at twenty four. Um, it just wasn't nice because uh, you know what I mean. Getting in and not having a squad number and all that, it was just a bit of a nightmare. But it was great to get a move up with Dundee United. Do you know what I mean? And just continue my career up there. After Dundee United, JP, for me, I don't know Jim, I'll go to Jim in a minute, I don't know if Jim will tell me. Otherwise, but Dundee United are quite a big club, JP, in Scotland. Aye. Aye, they are, yeah. no, definitely, I mean, um, they're always, I mean, you back to, obviously, old Jim, when he was there, um, and they beat Barcelona, for fuck's sake, you know what I mean, in Europe, uh, they, were a, they, were a, they were a top side. Um, they stopped Rangers winning a double treble, um, I'm going back. It was Craig Brewster scored a goal. Aye. Uh, Aye. I think it was Ivan Golak. Ivan Golak. That's right. Won it. I won no one. Aye, they won nothing. Um, Andy McLaren and all that were all there, but they were all young boys. Yeah. Uh, I think Big Duncan Ferguson and that was all part of that set up in there as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, we Paddy, Paddy Conley. We Paddy Conley played as well, why? Paddy oh. Conley. Uh, I did, they, they were a good, they were a good, big Dave Bowman and all that all played with that team as well, Morris Malpass, they, they, they were a good side, so they've always, they've always been well, um, well renowned for having good sides, um, I remember Sheila Olsen and all that when he played with them. Uh, I mean, Winters were good up front, weren't they? What's that? Big, uh, big Olsen and Robbie Winters, Robbie, Robbie Winters. Aye, Robbie, Robbie was a good player, I know, aye, he was a cracker, um, big Steve Dykes there to go, I know, he was a big card, he was a crack, he was a crack pot man. He reminded Aye. me of a mad monk out of Mean Machine, see the fall. That's who he reminded me. He used to come for cross. He used to come for cross balls, and my dad would always say, he's not getting this. And he'd always take about four or five people out of him. But now, nowadays, if we went to VAR, that would be a penalty. He'd be saying yeah. half, it would be a challenge. But he just used to come for balls. You're going, what are you doing, big man? You're never getting that in a month for Sundays. And he would always just make a big ruckus. He'd say, what, just spread his cell across the crowd. And I, the, 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 so as, you say there, Ryan, that they've always been there or thereabouts, mate. They've always had great good squads. Um, in the last maybe 15, 20 years, of, some of their squads are probably underachieved more than, more than they have anything else. Um, but just when you, obviously, your, your Kelly days, Jim, see whenever you played like against the, any, the old firm or anything, did you feel between you and the dressing room, etc., that 
was there a golf fair, Jim? Was there a was it was that a massive step up to going against the boys? I mean, Casella obviously a good side, so did the Rangers team. And it, but you've uh, played against guys like Henrik and Chris Sutton and John Hartson and Ayo Berkovic and Marav taking all kind of boys. So see when you, you get up against these boys, how did it feel getting into the games? Like were you confident? Were you, were you, were you getting in about us more today? Or were you like, to be honest, you, we were like, lucky like, if we like, keep us down to about two or three? Aye, like, like, like I say, I've touched on it. It's, um, you need a wee bit of luck. If you're going to beat any side of the old firm, you need a bit of luck. Um, <laughs> but you want to begin into the games confident. No, if you've won the last two or three games, you've got good momentum. Like I say, is at Rugby Park, we always felt we could get a result against the old firm. Mm-hmm. Just because we always made it hard for them down there, do you know what I mean? The way we defended, we, we, we defended, we always squeezed out the box. We defended with a high line. Um, and I used to relish the games. I loved going to the games because you know it's a full house. You know it's on the telly. And, uh, and you know, you might roll your sleeves up and get stuck in. That doesn't mean that at times we didn't get ro- sort of rolled over. You'd, you know what I mean? Sometimes we mm-hmm. did. You know what I mean? I played, played in some games where they get into a momentum and a rhythm. Um, and I used to like to try and stop that by just fouling people, you know what I mean? Just giving people a kick when you could give people a kick back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. um, just, just to stop the rhythm and the momentum that, that, that they get and the flow. Because you've got to stop that and just get in about them. Um, and you need the luck, like I say. But, you know, I was fortunate that I'd, I went to Ibrox a couple of times and won um, with Kumarna and Dundee United. Um, also put Rangers out the cup. Dick Adricats, Rangers out the cup. Quarterfinals at Tanadise, full house up there. Davey Hanna scored with a header. We beat them 1-0. And again, they hit the post, they hit the bar. But that night, we played well. And mm. I always remember, we were on a good run, seven or eight games on, beat me United at the time. And we had a decent team up there. I played with DeVos, Jason DeVos, myself, Midland okay. Park, you had like Danny Griffin, Davey Hanna, Craig Easton. Up front, you had uh, Jim Hamilton and uh, Derek Lilly. Derek Lilly was good getting in behind. And I always remember that game. We fancied ourselves. You know, it was Rangers, like I say, Moles, we Fergie, Craig Moore, Amaroos, and that. But we fancied ourselves to beat them that night. We got a wee bit of luck, we'll beat them. And that just comes from the league form. We were in good league form. It was a night under the lights at Tanadise, full house, live in, the, live in the telly. We got that wee bit of luck and we managed to beat them 1 0. We went down to Ibrox the same season. We beat them 2 0 at Ibrox. Again, um, weathered the storm a wee bit early on, played our way into the game and deservedly beat them 2 0 at the end up. It's just. Just sometimes, like I say, as you get that wee bit of luck, you take the chances. Uh, you can beat them. Do you know what I mean? I never ever... You knew... It. I mean, you, you know they're all international players. I mean, there's, there's no manager can kid you. I mean, you're not against Celtic Rangers. They've got better players than us. Mm-hmm. But if we turn up on the day, we've got a chance. Do you know what I mean? And like I say, you get that wee bit of luck. We all defend well. Your keeper's an outstanding game. They get chances. They miss a couple of easy chances. you got a couple of chances. You take one. You've got something hard, don't you? You never know. You never know. Do you know what I mean? Um, but their games I always look forward to because like I say it was a full house a lot of your pals and that were there as well your mm-hmm. family were there um, and obviously being a Celtic support and playing against them was brilliant going to park even playing in front of 60,000 who wouldn't they love that you know what I mean um, oh, definitely um, is it easy to, is it easy to play the game and play uh, uh, the, the sometimes the occasion take over Jim like is it easy did you ever get starstruck with some of the boys that were on the pitch with you or did you did you find your, your mind wandering at, at any time at all when you were nah, playing? No, no, I wouldn't no, really. would say so. No, I was just, I was more focused on my performance. You know what I mean? I was a kind of leader mm-hmm. with, with, with the teams and that. I was either captain, vice-captain of the team. So just about all, try to organise the team, get the boys up for it. And like I say, if I felt at any time they were getting into a rhythm or whatever, I would just clean some day up just to, just to stop that. Or if the boys' heads were going down, just to get a wee, a wee rammy going. Um, where these were all into it, so it would get the boys g'd up again. Um, but no, I never, I was never, I was never really starstruck. I just looked forward to basically playing up, playing against the quality of players we're playing against. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of times uh, Larson would get a better than me, but there's a lot, a lot of games I played well against Larson, played well against Viduka, Big Sutton. Big Sutton was a clever player, don't think he get the credit he deserved for how good he was at Parkhead. Um, and uh, he was very, very clever, he wasn't just like a big target man. It was brilliant with the boy's feet and all big something. Um, always gave you a hard time. And, you know, if you gave him a bit, he would always give you a bit back. When I played against Viduka, you could go and dominate him because he didn't like the physical side of the game. Mm. Technically, a very good player with the boy at feet. But if you gave Sutton and you gave Hartson a bit, even Larson, they would come back at you. You know what I mean? They, they, they would dish it out as well. Whereas 
I felt when I played against like Big Viduka and that, he, he, he didn't fancy it, you know what I mean? When it came to the, the physical side, it wasn't interested, just get the ball to his feet. And, you know what I mean? He'll let the skills and that take over. Um, but no, it was brilliant. It was brilliant playing against guys of that calibre, do you know what I mean? And I always, always looked forward to it. It's interesting as well, you say that about Vizuka, because obviously the way he left Celtic and maybe didn't want to stay for a fight on the new manager and stuff like that. So it's interesting you say that, because technically we all know how good he was, but it's interesting you say that as well, Jim, because he did kind of look to play like that. Um, I don't think he would play in teams nowadays, because nowadays you need to have a bit about you in as well. So um, obviously as well, Jim, you put the Ross County as well in Livingston. How was Ross County? Um, was, that, was, was that one of your better times as a player as well? Um. I have to say, to be honest, I enjoyed all the clubs I played for. I just mm. loved playing football and was fortunate enough to date for a number of years. But I went up to Ross County and, again, because Alex Smith was up there um, and I just went up there out of respect for Alex Smith. Mm. Um, and I always remember the first day I'm driving up and I, I'd never been up to Inverness, so I'm driving for Glasgow, I'm driving up and I'm like, this road's never ending. If I end up signing with a small block here, I'm never going to get down the road. You're driving up that A9 and that's what I was saying because Alex, Alex was his phone he's like you, you're far away I says I'm still looking at mountains I, I says Alex I, I don't know how long it's going to take me to up here man this road's never ending but but anyway when I got up there um, I was pleasantly surprised honestly see the facilities up at Ross County have you been up there to follow the hoops I've, up there I've, 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 I've only been uh, in the stadium I've not actually seen a lot of it and stuff well run the back run at the back of the stadium probably where the away end is run that, run that side there's, there's, there's a couple of there's an AstroTurf, a 4G AstroTurf pitch. I've got an indoor facility and I've got two or three grass pitches that are really well looked after. So obviously at Kilmarnock, if you see where Rugby Park is, where that big hotel mm-hmm. is and at the car park, right. that's where we trained when I was there. That was like almost like a pitch and a half before that hotel went up there. So we trained there every day, get changed in the dressing rooms at the car park and just walked down and trained there. Dundee United, we had to get a minibus to go to training. Um, and then I went up to Ross County, as I say, and um, I went up there and Alex Lark Norris, he's your training facilities. Like I say, it's an indoor facility, big brand new 4G pitch and three grass pitches. I'm like, these are the best facilities I've seen, Alex. He's like, I know, tell me about it. He says, outstanding up here. And um, and as I say, so initially I went up and I signed for six months and I ended up signing a three-year deal. And I must be honest, when I was up there, uh, I loved it. I loved living in Inverness. It was a big, big change with Stein. I stay in East End of Glasgow. Um, uh, and it's it's nice and quiet up there in Inverness, you know what I mean? And I get married at that time. I get married and uh, my wife moved up to Inverness, got a good job in that. And it was just a nice way of life up there. Um, was the same intensity, I would say, you know what I mean? Having played like in the Dundee derbies, the Ayrshire derbies and that, playing against Celtic Rangers, like, Almost when I played with Ross County, I felt as if we had to create our own atmosphere at home games because mm. the fans were nice and nice, if you know what I mean. So you've got mm. to create your own atmosphere. And I say that I always say that to the boys before games. The fans aren't going to lift us here. We need to lift ourselves, boys. Do you know what I mean? It's up to us when we go that white line to 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 basically get the place jumping as much as we could, do you know what I mean? Um but no, I did I was up there three years and I, I can honestly say I, I loved it up there and, and it was a well run club and, and Roy McRae. Roy McGregor, the chairman, um, like I say, is, uh, is he's he's a wealthy, wealthy man as well, and he's he's a a, a, a man for Russia. I just up by Inverness, so he's a he's a proper Ross County man. Do you know what I mean? He just wants the best for the club, um, and it's nice to see him doing well and where they're the new back in the SPL. As I say, I've I've got nothing but good things to say about my time at Ross County, and that's living in Inverness. Me and the wife loved it, absolutely loved it up there. Through your whole career, Jim. Um, have you always been quite strict in terms of your nutrition or is in, individual clubs all different? Do they all like give you different plans? Is it all, uh, uh, or was it back then? Was it merely down to you? Because I know well, it's all kind of heightened now with sports science and everything that is now and you've got, to, you've got to be a certain percentage of body fat when you're coming back into pre-season and they may have yeah. fucking, they be well putting a chip up your fucking arse now and keeping an eye on you because ah, that's mental. exactly what it's like now. They know I've written a book, you know, because. Aye, they do. Um, <laughs> they, when you're coming back, back you look like a couple of seasons ago, there, you get Griffiths coming back, he was, he be, you know, it was deemed all over media that he was overweight and <laughs> getting into the 10 in a row season, that was just, it created a lot of noise for the club, but just fucking, we didn't need it that time. And that just started, that was a pioneer of that season, it just started to snowball it up right out of fucking control for us in my uh-huh. opinion 
So getting back to that, is it individually yourself, your responsibility, or was it was it each club, was it different in each one of them? Well, back, back in the day, I, I, I spoke to people about this before, that back in the day, you were able to have a couple of pints when you were driving and that as well. You could drive, you could have a couple of pints. So I always remember, like in my early days in the commander dress room, like in the fridge, so I'm going back to, what, 93, 94, 95, right? There was cans of tenants and all that in the fridge for the boys for the rest of the game. Do you know what I mean? So if you got a good result, if you got a good result, then... It was it was normal for the boys after the manager of his team talk after the game saying brilliant, well done boys, you're off Sunday sees Monday. You know, the boys maybe a couple of wee knocks, they would have an ice pack or whatever on their ankle or whatever. They would just sit with their slips on, you know what I mean, or their shorts on, have their tap that half and just sit in a can of tenants. And at that time, you remember the tenants cans? I always remember because obviously I was a young boy at the time. You used to have the woman on the cans of tenants. I right? remember that. Or the woman and all that. So, so that's the way it was back, back in the day, do you know what I mean? Um, and the boys would have a can then they would go into the, the players' lounge, meet the wife, have another pint or whatever, and then just drive up the road with the family. That 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 was the norm back when I first started at Kilmarnock. Um and then I they would they would take everybody's weight at the start start of the season. But I always remember like guys like George McCloskey, Bobby Williamson, back then they would have like black bags on, cut it out, put it over their head under their t-shirt to lose the weight when we were doing the runs. Obviously, I was like a I was like a big Kenyan with a big long legs. Now I was away for everybody in pre-season. <laughs> know what I mean, I was 16, skinny as in, had no fun of drink yet. Know what I mean, didn't drink alcohol. I was gone. But um, but I always remember that all, all the senior pros to lose weight. A lot of them back then would just put a black bag mm. under their t-shirts. And then obviously, as time went on, even in my time at Kilmarnock, it went for, like I say, cans of tenants in the fridge to your protein shakes and all that. Do you know what I mean? So they'd have all the protein shakes ready for the boys. Um, for after the game, then you had the ice baths come in. The ice baths, they, they would have the bath, and then they would have a couple of just the green bins, mm. and it would fill them with ice. You know what I mean? And uh, cold water, and you had to do between seven and ten minutes in that. Um, and then when you were doing that, you'd have your protein shake that as well for your recovery. Um, the game evolved and changed. You know what I mean throughout my career, but I was always wary of what I was eating all the time throughout my career. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't one of the players that. Well, one of the best players I played with, and uh, Charlie Miller. Do you know what I mean? Charlie was a fantastic player, but um, he probably tell you if he was a better pro, he'd probably be a multi-millionaire today um, with the ability he had. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't like a luxury player. I had to, I had to be really fit uh, and look after myself because I didn't have the ability. Of these guys, but I always found that the technically gifted players would probably eat more shit than anybody else a couple of more pints than anybody else, you know what I mean? But we always knew, certainly my time at United, if we go Charlie on the ball, he could get us a run bonus. Do you know what I mean? With the abilities, go with left foot, right foot, um, talented, talented player. But I would say through the years, um, it just get better and better at every club, do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I was at, but I was always wary throughout my career what I was eating. Uh, I was always focused on that. Um, sort of before it came in, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. But I would say throughout my career, I, I t- took it on board myself. It was my responsibility. Do you know what I mean? Right. Would you say the game's changed much for then? You know, I would say it's changed much. Like if you're talking about how the way teams play, and I, I, I do tend to get a wee bit frustrated when you watch teams, and every single team thinks they can play out for the back. Um, do you know what I mean? Because Barcelona, Man City, do it. Every team thinks they can do it. And saying that. I was the, John McLaughlin like, thought he could do it in Saturday. Oh, I loved that, man. That was brilliant, wasn't it, man? I loved him trying to play out for the back in Saturday. That was fantastic. You can't do it, man. You can't do it. I know. I just, but One I just, day, but you can't do it. But I just... I always remember that one thing... I loved the time when Brendan Rodgers was the manager, but I just thought... That, you know, in Europe, he was a bit naive in terms of trying to play... We were playing PSG at him. He's trying to play out for the back. I'm thinking to myself... You know what I mean? You've got Mbappe, Cavani and whoever else up front ready to press us at the edge of the box. When it mm. wasn't really owned, you know what I mean? We're not playing against Hamilton Ackes, we're playing against PSG. Missed the press. Hit big Dembele and play after Dembele for second balls at times. Um, different if, you know, the keeper comes and ca- catches a cross when they're attacking, then we roll it out and we go for there. Uh, but I just think every single team trying to play out for the back at every single opportunity, it's not always owned, you know what I mean? And 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 I love nobody loves ball playing centre backs and that and watching them 
teams playing out for the back, but it's not always on. Sometimes they've just got to miss the press. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Especially when teams are set to press you, especially when the ball's dead at a goal kick and they're on the 18 yard box ready to press on the front foot and you play it out for the back. Why? Just miss it out. It's not it on. Seems, it just seems to be, Jim, that I think it's probably the Guardiola. Ever since he's down, everybody just seems to think they can fucking do it for the back. I, I, do, I do believe that. And I always. I just, I just thought that's one thing that annoyed me about Brendan his time at Celtic. I thought he was naive in Europe, and we did take a couple of downs uh, in the camp. New, uh, I think we could beat six or seven, and uh, he just wanted to change his philosophy. And I thought that was a bit naive because I always remember <laughs> Leicester went and won at Man City a couple of years ago, and I listened to him on that match of the day after the game, and he says we just set, we, we set up the day, and every time we missed the press, so we played in behind for Vardy. Every time Michael Gore he kicked because obviously. You're getting them on the back foot. It's not to say you're going to beat Man City, mm-hmm. but obviously that day it worked for them, do you know what I mean, in terms of missing the press. And I always remember that. I said, I wish you'd done that sell it. We wouldn't have took as many doons in Europe as we took mm-hmm. um, if he just missed the press at times. But, I mean, that's him being a manager, isn't it? But that's... The difference I, I is, keep... you need to have the players comfortable enough to date first and foremost. And me, guys, look, no disrespect, I know he was a brilliant player, he was a great servant for us, but we guys like Mika Lustig, who... In my opinion, wasn't he, he, he wasn't he, Juranovic. He wasn't able to turn and, you know, he never had that speed. He started to lose the pace after a wee bit of work at that, at that time. And we, had, we started off, I mean, it wasn't a big Craig that started, by the way. It was fucking Doris de Vries that started. So he wasn't exactly, he wasn't a lawyer, you know what I mean? So he wasn't, you know, he wasn't able to... Um, what the bunny can she did against the boy Kelly Barry against Kilmarnock, your old team? Aye. The one that, the boy's nearly on his own half, man. I mean, fucking, I don't know how that goal still went in. And then the one here at Zenit St. Petersburg, he was, he was similar to Barkas in that he just didn't like to put his son up to save the ball. Aye. He, he can have, he can have thought it was beneficial to dive at the road and dive the other way from where the ball was gone. Aye. Um, like see the big Ange. Ange has got players now that can play single pivot, double pivot, so they can yeah. the, the, the new can do you know what I mean? They're so comfortable. And see, even if they make a mistake, Jim, they want the ball, they're fucking they're, they're game enough to go, give the ball back. I don't care, I've made a mistake, but fuck it, I'm gonna take the ball under pressure and try again. And that's yeah. the way he that's in that's the mindset and he's got in them. So I don't want I know Benzema's not gonna press you the way Mbappe and Neymar and that would, but like say Big Tony Cruz and Modric can still cover the pitch very well, and um, but they're not going to presses the way no, no. your PSG would have. No. So we're going to be allowed. They'll allow us a ball to an extent there to, to, to be able to play it, but it's it's when Celtic need to know when and when and when to do it is in being clever mm-hmm. and when to when we press. Don't go fucking gung ho. Remember, we'll still get, as you said, don't leave us with their three on or two. Because it, two passes, they're up the park. They done it against Liverpool for the goal in the Champions League final. Aye. I think we are, uh, I, I, I don't think Ange's going to change it. I think we're going no. to attack, attack, attack. And see, to be honest, I'm happy with that. Do you know what I mean? Because like I say, you know, we can all appreciate this season. We've got after a phenomenal start. We've just won a derby. We've come after by a derby. We're back in the Champions League. If we're being honest, it's a free hit at Real Madrid. That's the way I see it. It's a free hit at Real Madrid. They won the Champions League last year. There's a few mm-hmm. teams, there's a few players in their team that are aging. If we play with that same intensity, and and I must say, like, even on Saturday when I was at the game, you know, like Rangers had a shot, and I'm watching the shot just going by the post. I'm watching it going by the post. Joe Hart's already taking the goal kick. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's got, I'm like, I'm watching the ball and I'm like, oh, we're attacking him. Because he's got that wee boy right at the side net. And, and as soon as the ball goes out, that Joe Hart's got the ball. I'm like, the, nobody's ready. I mean, mm-hmm. that Modridge and that, that Tony Crowe's and that, like, what's going on here? You know yeah. what I mean? If, if we do that that quick and I... You, you see Joe Hart, he's, he's like a madman. As soon as the ball's mm-hmm. out, he's like, give me the ball, wee man. This is actually all done, it? They're all drilled and they know. They're all drilled, mate. Aye. It's fantastic and it does work. And even even Rangers, you think after the pummeling we gave them the last time at Park Heath, they'd have been ready for that. And even try to stifle us, but they never. And uh, and Joe Hart is brilliant at that. Do you know what I mean? As I say, mm-hmm. a couple of times on Saturday, I'm looking, I'm looking to see where the shots went and and we're already he's already he's already took the took the goal kick and we're away. Mm-hmm. Attacking. So um 
if we play with that intensity for the first 25, 30 minutes, then you never know. But as I say, the way we are going to play with the full-backs forming on, and to be fair, we Greg Taylor has been outstanding as well. Um, do you know what I mean? There was question marks asked of him, and I only ever seen him as a backup for Kieran Tierney back in the day when he came in for Kilmarnock and maybe play against the lesser teams at Park Keith in the league. But the boy's been outstanding, to be fair. I mean, he's, he's come on leaps and bounds under Ange, and uh, it's nice to see it's another Scottish boy on the team, and it's nice to see him doing well as well. Also as well, Jim, um, just to take some last wee bit of the pod, mate, obviously probably done the Schlag on there. How would you sum up your time there, and obviously... As, a, as your career as a whole, how would you sum up your professional career? Um, let's be fair, Jim, I think you've played with some very good teams, played with some very good players. So, for me, I would, I would give yourself a massive part of that for what you've done. Um, we've interviewed a lot of guys and the tent, you know, give yourself any credit whatsoever. And I'm like, we've well, done that far better than me. So, it's, uh, it's, it's the fact you've done, it's the fact that um, I, I like to find out how you get there and how you consistently stay at that level for that long. It's like your eating habits and your training habits and it's de- pure dedication. So how as a whole would you sum up your career? Um, I look back at my career with no regrets. I can always say to players nowadays, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I gave it everything at every club I was at, you'd be happy. And I can honestly say at every club I played at, I gave it everything. I was always a good influence on others. As I learned from a very young age, after your Tommy Burnsies, your Billy Starts, your Andy Mullins, Mark Riley, they were good influences on me. And I took that mantelpiece up, always seen myself as a leader in the dressing rooms and always try to be the best pro I could be. And even when I was out the team, I, I wasn't a sulker. I would just work harder to get back in the team. Um, and I, I look back at my career, I've, I've never really had any regrets. I, like I say, I can look myself in the mirror and say, every every club I played for, I gave my maximum in training every day and in every game. I never, uh, I never gave anything less than 100%. Um, and I wasn't good enough to, to be honest, to give less than 100%. But looking back at my career, I've no regrets. As I say, I, I gave it absolutely everything and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And as I say, it's probably no new until I look back. And even when I meet boys and boys say, big man, you, you helped my career and you helped my, 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 my mate's career, he speaks highly. You. It's always nice to hear these things, you know what I mean? It, it is nice to hear that. But but just looking back at my own career, like I say, it's no regrets. I, 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 I gave it everything, 100% for every club. Uh, uh, Just on that, Jim, the, the other clubs you played with, the knowledge you've gained through the years, watching the game and playing, who's your best player you played against? It's going to be Henrik, isn't it? It's going Henrik. to be Henrik. Aye, Henrik, Henrik was brilliant. I must I must say, but Loudrop, Loudrop was brilliant as well when he was uh, he was with Rangers, you know what I mean? Uh, Loudrop was brilliant as well and it was just laughing. McCoy, McCoy was brilliant as well. And I didn't actually appreciate, appreciate how good a player Coy was until he came to Kilmarnock. And that was towards the end of his career. Just watching him actually in shooting drills, left foot, right foot, half volleys, he does tappings, you know what I mean? And, and even Larson, people say, ah, he's he's a lucky, lucky bastard scoring the goals. Nah, you're not a lucky striker to score 25, 30 goals year after year. There's a knack to being in the right place at the right time. And like I say to you, when the ball comes in for a wide area, you know, you're trying to watch the man and be tight to him. As soon as you take your eyes off a striker, and I'm talking about good strikers, because a lot of them don't move, but as soon as you look at the ball, they're gone. And it's a bit like Kyogo, I think his movement's frightening, just looking for the stand. But when you're mm-hmm. at one apart, Larson's movement was phenomenal in terms of getting behind you. Just an act of being in the right place and manage, managing to lose you in the box. And another thing people don't appreciate about Larson was, well, probably day, but how good he was in there. The leap he had in there and he would hang in there and bullet bullet he does him. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe how good he was we spring in there. Um very, very good. And the, the thing with Loudrop when you played against Loudrop, because I always when you were playing against a player, right, I'm coming out against Loudrop, right? I would always think, right, what's his weakness? Where can I show him? What, 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 you know, I'll keep him on his left. If, you know what I mean? If I'm one on one, I'll no let him come on his right. He's gone on his left, even if I overshow him his left. But he was he was too fitted, you know what I mean? So he was as good at striking his left as his right. So you're up against it as a centre back because you're looking for a weakness there, and there's no real weakness, you know what I mean? It was some some similar obviously with, with Henrik, do you know what I mean? I think overall, right. I think overall the fact you played against Larson, um obviously I know you scored at Celtic Park as well. For me, Jimmy, you've done a lot of things that boys would dream of. 
Um, so definitely, it's been an amazing chat to you, Jim. Um, last word for yourself, JP, and, and El to Jim, and again, it's been an amazing chat. No, it's been great. It's been a great insight listening to you, Jim, uh, speaking about your career and obviously guys that you've, you've played beside and obviously you've played against and then obviously you've told us about being managed by Tommy Burns and what he was like and um, yeah. I think that's absolutely phenomenal. And considering even then, because Tommy Burns was a young man, even at the time then. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, because that was one of my dad's biggest things when he when he got to see like job. My dad's like that. He's a right manager just at the wrong time. My dad thought he was just too young for a job. At he the just time, couldn't. My, ah, yeah. He I just couldn't. He couldn't. Yeah. But, but little did we know, across the water, I was a taxi even at the time, you know what I mean? So no, no. we didn't know what that was going on at the time. And, and as I say, but, um, but it's been absolutely outstanding um, hearing your story, Jim. And obviously, I appreciate you and thank you very much again for coming on tonight uh, to talk to the two um, no, no bother, guys. No bother. I've enjoyed it. You, you know, your time to do it. So, um, anything else for you, Ryan? No, that's us, mate. I just appreciate Jimmy's time. It's been brilliant to get his career. And obviously, we, we could talk about his career for hours. There's so much you can ask for Bob was. But mm-hmm. again, Jim, thanks very much, mate. Um, it's been brilliant to talk to you. And I hope we get good up uh, tomorrow. Um, hope you enjoy the game, mate. And hail, hail, and take care. Just Jim, before we you. go, just before we go, if anybody's listening mm-hmm. and you like the content for the page, guys, please hit subscribe to my YouTube page you'll get a wee notification when, we, when the page goes live. Um, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, myself and Ryan. Uh, Ryan obviously has got some jazzy wee videos up and going on TikTok now as well. So we're up to we're up to the up to the current date on there as well. Um, but no, 